Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the delightful operetta, Nina Rosa, starring Gordon McRae and his charming guest, Mimi Benzel. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we know you're all going to be as delighted as we are with our lovely guest, Miss Mimi Benzel, and the wonderful Romberg music for... Nina Rosa. This is the story of an American mining engineer. Me. A gaucho from Peru. Si, that's me. And the lovely daughter of an old Spanish gentleman. Nina Rosa. to begin with, Nina Rosa was beautiful. Uh, she was also rich. Don't forget that. She owned the Nina Rosa mine. The fact that she was rich is completely beside the point. No, Bobby. no, 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 no. You talk like the idiot you are. If one is to put up with a woman, she should be rich as well as beautiful. Would you mind letting me tell the story? But you are leaving out the most interesting point. Well, my company had an option on this Peruvian mine, and I had been sent down there to find out whether it was of any value. And while I was there, I met Nina Rosa. The moment I saw her, I couldn't make any secret of how I felt about her. I didn't try. I guess I told everyone I met. I feel with pride when I'm by her side. I own all the wealth in Peru. When we go home, when we go home, when you take your sweet treasure with you. Rosa. 
Yes, I was in love with Nina Rosa. And I thought there might be a chance that she was in love with me. But the villain of the story kept mixing things up. Uh, 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 do you refer to me? I do. In my mind, I was not the villain. I was the hero. I, too, loved Nina Rosa. I, too, took the memory of her wherever I went. Her eyes, her smile, her gold mine, her voice. Determined to have Nina Rosa for my own. Her and the Nina Rosa mine. But of course. Incidentally, Pablo, how did you find out the mine was so valuable? From one of your own men, gringo. One of my men? See, si. I'll tell you how it happened. I was walking down the road, and this fellow came up to me. And... Pablo. Hey, Pablo. Yeah? What do you want, gringo? Do you want to get rich? Uh, I am a practical man. To me, that has always been a most agreeable prospect. Okay, then I got a deal for you. You own stock in the Nina Rosa Mining Company, don't you? Gee. Well, today I came across a vein of the richest gold-bearing quartz I've ever seen. You've got a bonanza. I have? Mm-hmm. Well. Well, well. Well, well, well. <laughs> now, Jack doesn't know about this. If I don't tell him, he won't exercise the option. The mine will be yours. And uh, what is your price for this information? Oh, um, a thousand shares of stock. The, a thousand shares? You strike a hard bargain. Ah, besides, what is the use? Jack Haynes will inspect the mine and find out its value himself. He doesn't have to find out. Huh? You have your knife, don't you? Do you think I would do a thing like that? I do. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Oh, look, there's Nina Rosa with Jack now. She used to be your girl before he came here, wasn't she? Ah, she. Si. She was my girl before he came here. Fire with maddening desire, and this beloved 
my Nina Rosa. I wish I could be your Nina Rosa. But you are. Oh, no. Pablo has asked me to marry him. Do you love him? Oh, I hate him. Well, then. But I also fear him. Oh, Jack, I cannot see you again. If Pablo thinks I am interested in you, he will kill you. He is very cruel. I'm not afraid of them. But I am afraid. So you and I must never meet again. Never speak. Never even smile. But I will remember you as long as I live. Oh, Nina. Why should it make you cry, my dear? That you must ask the rose, I fear. Who petals each hide a secret tear? I'll change your story. But how? Your rose, dear, may not forever be for sale. Flower, a sweeter story may unfold. Though blushing unseen, tomorrow may mean a happy rose. True love has come to never let you go. We'll return for the second act of Nina Rosa in just a moment. Next Saturday, as the nation celebrates Armed Forces Day, many of us will have a chance to see at first hand something of the progress being made in rearming America. First and most important in that effort comes the trained men and the other men in training who make up our armed forces on land and sea and in the air. But those of us who visit military installations next Saturday will be impressed with another thing, too. The vast amount and the great variety of equipment, munitions, and supplies which must be put in the hands of the men who make up the armed forces, upon whom American safety and freedom depend. An essential part of the process of producing guns, tanks, ships, planes, and all the other things our men must have is transportation, the movement of millions of tons of raw materials and finished products. Moving the bulk of these materials from many sources, moving them to factories all over the nation for fabrication, delivering the products to bases and camps and ports, that's primarily a job for the railroads. For just as was proved in World War II, when railroads moved more than 90% of all war freight, there is no substitute for the dependability, economy, and efficiency provided by big freight cars pulled over steel rails by powerful locomotives. Since the close of World War II, the railroads have spent almost one and one-half billion dollars for new freight cars. They have spent nearly as much for new locomotives and more than $2 billion for improvements to tracks, signals, shops, and other facilities. And this year, they plan to spend still another billion and a quarter dollars for further improvements and increases in their carrying capacity. These enlarged and improved facilities are part of the productive strength of America. They are indeed an integral part of the growing might of the armed forces, the forces whose transportation needs have first call upon the facilities and services of America's railroads. That's why it's so important that the railroads be allowed to obtain the materials, particularly steel, they need to keep step with the demands of the nation's commerce and its rearmament program.
And now here is the second act of Nina Rosa, starring Gordon McRae and his guest, Mimi Benzel. <laughs> So this Pablo fellow came between Nina Rosa and me. There were plenty of other senoritas around, but I couldn't make myself pay any attention to them, no matter how pretty they were. Pretty senoritas, I must confess, you're as sweet as you can be. In your glance, there is fire when you dance, you inspire. I know that he means me. All of you chiquitas are more or less on the loose, you will agree. But where I am concerned, all the tables are turned. He means he is not free. Somebody has set my heart aflame. Nina Rosa is her name. Will it hurt if you flirt? Might as well, we won't tell. I'm afraid you could not amuse me now. For I'm in love and a said she loved me. That was because she thought you'd kill me if you'd thought she liked me. She was right. I would have. But I found out. I found out anyhow. I walked into her garden. She was all alone. She didn't hear me. At first, I thought she was singing for me. Until you walked in. There is but one I care to live for. I'd gladly give for We heap of me And should there come a day When I am far away You'll find him Remind him I shall 
Rosa, it is Jack Haynes you lost. Pablo! Well, I'll break every bone in his body with my bare hands. You're welcome to try. Oh, Pablo, he means nothing to me. Eh? Nina Rosa. Oh, I make a fool of him to amuse you. What do I care for this weak, spineless foreigner? You are a man, Pablo. <laughs> <laughs> you hear what she says, gringo? Yes, I hear what she says, Pablo. Glad to have amused you, Senorita. Uh, I make of him the mince meat. Oh, he is not worth killing, Pablo. Do not even waste your time. Come, spend it with me. <laughs> I, I do not think I quite trust you, Nina Rod. <laughs> have I not told you I loved you? What more can I do? You can marry me this very afternoon. This. Afternoon? Marry me or he dies. Very well, Pablo. I'll marry you this afternoon. I went off a happy man to prepare for my marriage to Nina Rosa. I even invited you to the wedding. Yes, and I didn't accept. No, you were very bad sport about the whole matter. Well, my bride was waiting at the altar, dressed in white satin, and the wedding veil of her mother. I was so excited I hardly looked at her. That's the last time I'll ever get that excited. And I was alone in my hotel room, packing to go home. And suddenly there was a knock at the door. <laughs> you, Nina Rosa. Oh, Jack, don't turn away from me. I had to say what I did. Pablo has the strength of a hundred men when he's angry. I said those things only to save you. And what about your marriage to Pablo? Jack, the wedding is taking place now. See, in my place, wearing my veil, is one of my friends. A girl who has always been in love with Pablo. Why? Only heaven knows. Oh, sweetheart, I can hardly believe what I hear. Oh, Jack, I love you. I love you. Your smiles, your tears, your hopes, your fears, they all belong to me.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And special thanks to Mimi Benzel. And thanks, too, to the other members of our cast, Marvin Miller and Peter Leeds, and to our entire company. Nina Rosa with music by Sigmund Romberg, book by Otto Harbach, and lyrics by Irving Caesar, was dramatized for The Railroad Hour by Gene Holloway. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. Folks, next Saturday, Armed Forces Day, is a good time to take stock of our own personal responsibilities for America's defense. And foremost among those responsibilities is a thorough knowledge of what to do to protect yourself, your family, and your community in the event of sudden surprise air attacks. The official air raid instructions prepared by the Civil Defense Authorities contains the information you need in order to do your part in such an emergency. Copies of the official Civil Defense Air Raid instructions can be obtained from your local authorities or by writing the Superintendent of Documents, Washington, D.C., and enclosing five cents in coin or stamp. Pull aboard. Well, looks as though we're ready to pull out, and so on to next week uh, when we play the chocolate, uh, the chocolate soldier. How now, brown cow? <laughs> <laughs> the chocolate soldier with Miss Marion Bell. This is Gordon MacRae saying goodbye. <laughs> Nina Rosa was presented, was presented by Special Arranger with the Tams with My Music Library. Gordon McRae can currently be seen starring in Warner Brothers' West Point story. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. And now, stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. <laughs> Hear Reza Stevens on The Voice of Firestone on NBC.